Welcome to World Domination. Disclaimer, the views expressed in this episode are for comedic effect. They should not be taken as advice, as opinions held by the people saying them, or before bedtime. No whales were harmed in the making of this production, though I can assure you one of them certainly thought about it. What are we doing tonight? The same thing we do every night. Try and take over the world. Are you guys sure you know what you're doing? Welcome to World Domination, episode two or three, depending on how you count. Um, I'm host number one, Jimmy Boy. <laughs> I'm host Alpha Ken. <laughs> I'm sorry. Host <laughs> Jimmy Boy. Jimmy Boy. <laughs> And hi, I'm Emma, and I am host, Emma. <laughs> Thank you. Um, welcome, everyone. How has everyone's day been? Look, it's been it's been a long day. Okay. Well, but I'm ready to talk about the internet. It's, it's, it's only going to get longer. <laughs> it has not. It has been a pretty good day. You know, looking forward to uh, recording this episode. Yeah, me too. Yeah, thanks for joining, guys. Yeah. So our topic tonight is depending. I don't know what the, sh- the show title is going to be yet, um, but we're talking about how one might use the internet to take over the world. Tear internet. Tay internet is internets. our running title. Who knows whether that becomes <laughs> the final it, title? It, it won't. If uh, host Emma has anything to say. <laughs> well, host A and host Alpha have different thoughts. Who's host A? Aren't you host A? No, I'm host one. <laughs> oh, okay, you're host one. So this is why it's just easy using your name. Host Emma. (laughs) Host Emma. But there's no hierarchy with Emma. Oh, there is. Okay. Um, So today we're talking about the internet. So to start off today, we thought we might go through some real world examples before we do anything else. So does anybody have their favorite one? Or are you just going to let me go on my rant first? Because I've been dying to talk about this example all day. Look, we all love a gym rant, so um, <laughs> I'm on board. I'm do on it. the train. Let's do it. Release the Kraken! The first real-life example of using the internet to take over the, wall, the world is a, a story from the late 1980s about something called the Wank Worm. And yes, you heard me correct. It's called the Wank Worm. <laughs> no wonder you love it so much, now, Jim. Wank is an acronym. It stands for Worms Against Nuclear Killers. And so this story combines so many of the things that I love. Yeah. It combines space travel, nuclear disarmament, 80s rock music of questionable quality, the internet, and shitting on Melbourne. All great things. Yep. (laughs) What did Melbourne do to you? Okay. So, uh, in the late 80s, NASA was about to launch this space probe called the Galileo Space Probe, and it was supposed to go to Jupiter to study Jupiter and its moons. Mm -hmm. Um, And because solar panels don't work too well out in Jupiter, because the sun's very dim, They needed to find another power source. And so they decided to use the same power source that they use for the Voyager probes, which is called a radioisotope thermoelectric generator. The way that this works is you get a big hunk of plutonium, and plutonium decays naturally over time. And as it does that, it releases heat. And you can then take that heat energy and convert it into electricity to run the electronics on your spacecraft. Mm. Um, But because it had plutonium in it, there were all of these protesters who were trying to stop NASA from launching this plutonium cylinder, basically, Um, on the space shuttle, bearing in mind that this was also the first launch after the Challenger disaster. So people weren't really thrilled about having a space shuttle explode plutonium all over Florida. (laughs) Yeah, they were protesting. What were they protesting about? Oh, Ken, Uh. I love you. (laughs) So, two days before the launch, or three days, can't remember, all of NASA's computer systems were shut down by this worm program that infiltrated into NASA's network and stopped all of their computers from running. And when the user tried to load up the system, it would just pop up a big message that says, your computer has been wanked. (laughs) Or your base belong to us. (laughs) Why wouldn't you want to see that pop up? Yeah. Uh, And basically NASA had to delay the launch because they couldn't use their computers for anything. Uh, And so people were (laughs) frantically trying to figure out what had happened, like who had done this. Um, And to this day, nobody knows who built it, who made this worm and who got it into the NASA systems. They think the person who made it was Australian only because the code was littered with midnight oil references. <laughs> Classic Aussie. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm surprised that nobody's in all these years though, that nobody's come forward yeah. to, to like claim it. <laughs> they think it was these two Melbourne hackers who went by the pseudonyms Electron and Phoenix. 
<laughs> Amazing names. Yes, right? They were teenagers at the time. Um, one of them we still don't know the real name of because his name was protected uh, because he was still a child. Because of his age. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other one has come forward. He hasn't, you know, confirmed or denied it. Um, <laughs> so it was him. Yep, cool. Yeah. Cool. But it's just this fascinating story of just like these, possibly these two like teenagers from Melbourne making a midnight oil laced program to take down NASA. But you know what? Like one of the things that I, I have read about that, that they were saying that, you know, the, the, the whole, I guess, playful nature of things is that they, on some of the computers, they would like displaying file deletion dialogue. Yeah. That you couldn't, it couldn't be aborted, but no files actually deleted. Like yeah. you can just imagine two Aussie teenagers just sitting in their bedroom, probably high, <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> screwing with people. And can you imagine actually getting that popped up? And oh like, my. no, hold my files. <laughs> no. <laughs> my files. <laughs> Like, I'm just picturing my mum, like, sitting at the computer and she would just be, like, losing her mind. What's going on? <laughs> Peter, there's something yeah. wrong. Oh, and if it was two teenagers, do you think they came up with the word wank first? Or do you think they came up with the name first? No, it was definitely wank. It was definitely wank. <laughs> and then the, it's, in true NASA fashion, it's what's called a backronym. Yep. Backronym. Now that uh, now that we've mentioned, uh, you know, deleting files, you know, that reminds us of a very famous uh, ransomware that was circulating around uh, May 2017. Uh, ran- uh, the WannaCry w- ransom attack, where they were holding a lot of uh, information on people's computers hostage and made people pay them, like, pop up making people pay 300 to 600 bucks to uh, release their information. There's so many things I love about the WannaCry story. First off is the fact that it spread through the British health system like a wildfire because mm. they pretty much exclusively use Windows XP. <laughs> no updates Chris. for you. Yeah. <laughs> and the second thing I love is that it was foiled because the code contained a section that checked if a website was active. And if a website happened, like one particular website happened to be active, it just disabled itself. So the guy who found this just registered that website and then the whole thing just stopped. <laughs> oh. Ah, you foiled huh. my plan. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Well, that worked. Why, why? <laughs> yeah, it was like the easiest plan to foil ever. And like, no, again, nobody knows who made this, but like the NSA keeps track of all of these vulnerabilities like tech vulnerabilities so they can use them on foreign powers if they need to. Mm. And this was one that um, had leaked in some WikiLeaks stuff because people got a hold of a lot of their, I don't know what you call it, playbooks for getting stuff from other nations Mm -hmm. surreptitiously. But I mean, WikiLeaks is another interesting one though. Yeah. I mean, if if we're talking about the internet and kind of the power that that it has in a, I guess, a 21st century. Funnily enough... Julian Assange was a contemporary of Phoenix and Electron. They both frequented the same, like, hacker message boards in Melbourne in the late 80s. Well, there we go. We know that it was them then. Yeah. <laughs> and we know that Aussies just like to fuck shit up. <laughs> Basically. What a bunch of wankers. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> but no, but, the like, the amount of stuff that, like, WikiLeaks and that sort of thing is, is found, I think... I actually like that kind of stuff because it just shows that, you know, nobody's above. And for years, like, there's just been so many hidden things within the government and people just thinking that they're above everything else because they're a certain position or a certain person. And I think it's been good to kind of bring people down a peg. Bit of an equaliser. Yeah. And And I think that, you know, there's so much unjust crap that goes on in the world that to have people like that, that, you know, are bringing it to the surface and actually showing the public that this is actually what's going on. Like all that stuff with Iraq um, and all the stuff that was going on in Guantanamo Bay and things like mm. that, like actually releasing that kind of stuff. I I think it was a, a good thing. It is a good thing, but you also have to think about does this compromise, so like a good example, like does this compromise active intelligence gathering that like, you know, the US government might be conducting in like an anti-terror setting. Yeah. Like, look, I, th- I think there's there's like a, there's a limit of, you know, if there's certain things that, you know, like if you're doing anti-terror things, then they're doing it for a, a good reason. Do you know what I mean? They're 
pulling information and they're doing it. Whereas all the other stuff that's been going on that has well, most of the stuff, not everything, but most of the stuff that's been leaked is to to uncover actually what you said was going on. You were doing something totally different and it was super, super uncool. Yeah. Plus, we got all the cool code names that the NSA had for like their um their projects. So, some of the um the code names include Highlands, Vagrant, Magnetic, Blackheart, Dropmire, Dew Sweeper, and Radon. <laughs> did did some five year old <laughs> write all these? <laughs> like maybe. Ah, <laughs> oh, nerds. Oh. <laughs> Black <laughs> um, so Speaking cool. of nerds, you also kind of have to think about like, basically, this is all nerds that's responsible for this, and like, yeah. it's really, it's really fascinating to like read up on like instances where they've all got together. So like, <laughs> nerds with social come skills. From... <laughs> what? There's this fascinating book that I read when I was in uni called Hackers: Heroes of the Computer Revolution, <laughs> and it goes. It's fan- it's a fantastic book. It was written in the eighties. Um, and it goes through from like the sixties through to like the mid eighties. And then there's a, like a revised bit at the end where Bill Gates was interviewed in like 2005 because Bill Gates features quite prominently in the book in the la- last third of the book. Um, and it's just fascinating to watch. Like, it's basically like maybe 20 people that like influence so much of this culture. Mm. Like the word hacker comes from the MIT tech model railroad club. It was a it was a model train club for MIT kids, um, and they would basically like <laughs> cobble together. Do you know they were the coolest kids there? <sighs> yeah, a group of cool cats. What they would do is they would they would cobble together like bits of tech, you know, like bits of electronics from wherever they could get their hands on them because they were poor uni students, and then they would kind of cobble them together in what they a process they called hacking them together, and that's where the term came from. Oh, okay. So it's a term meaning just kind of like hodgepodging something together until it like just works. Oh, like for, kind of like forcing forcing your way to make things work. Yeah, basically like just like coming up with the minimum viable solution and like praying that it works is hacking something together. Oh, okay. And then the same similar thing is what's called the Homebrew Club. So the Homebrew Club is where Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak met. It was this like computer club in California where just like geeky people hung out on their weekends and they would just make their own computers. And, and that was where homebrew. What else is there to do in California, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, Steve Wozniak was an engineer for HP, I think, and Steve Jobs worked worked at Atari. Yeah. Uh, and Steve, you know, they met together and they made the Apple computer. Oh. Yeah. Fun times. Hmm. So it's just fascinating, like how like twenty odd people can like make you know, the entire world kneel before them. <laughs> Basically. We got this. We ha- we just need 17 more people and then we're done. Like we, we, all, we... all they have to do is release a new Apple iPhone and you'll have thousands of people lining up outside. Bend, bend the knee. Mark Zuckerberg, old, you know, z- old Zucky boy. <laughs> Facebook originally started as a, as a website to rate the attractiveness yeah. of women. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> Uh, uh, see, there are other things to do in California. Mm-hmm. You could be <laughs> just a horrible human being and rate women. Yeah. Well, yeah. look, <laughs> worked out for him in the end. Yeah. Um, can anybody think of any more real world examples? Um, I think there was one other one that you had mentioned before as well, Jim. Um, can't remember the name of it, but it was about um, they were you. Uh, directing major traffic to certain servers and things like that uh, yeah. um, and then mostly the people that were were affected from it were the people who were using default device passwords <laughs> which for me made me realize that oh, hold on a second <laughs> you should probably change those yeah if your password is like eight characters long like you need to change that um but how else am i going to remember it jim <laughs> correct horse battery staple <laughs> yeah seriously the trick, the trick is to have like three or four uncommon words that like computers can't get. So you want to make it long, and you want to make it you know a series of words maybe with spaces in the middle that is very easy to remember, but it is very difficult for a computer to guess. Now the hackers are catching up with this because they've realised that people are starting to use words instead of letters, and so instead of using words to like crack passwords, oh. they're just using 
Sorry, instead of using letters to try and crack passwords, they're just using words. So instead of using letters as units, they're using whole words from the dictionary. Whole words as units, as yeah. A unit. oh, okay. Because, you know, the computers have got to a point now where you can brute force attack whole words at a time and then mix and match the words up. So if you're using correct horse battery staple as your um, password, you need to change that. <laughs> if you're actually using that one, then you, yeah, you deserve to be hacked. Yeah, if you are using that, you are a legend, but you will also deserve to be hacked. <laughs> Um, for those who don't know, that oh. is a reference to an XKCD comic about password strength. And I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Oh, and the last real life example I had was, have you guys heard of a thing called Spectre or Meltdown? No. Vaguely. So this is a fantastic example of how things have gotten too complicated for our own good. So you understand that a computer has a CPU inside it and that CPU is divided into multiple cores that can all act independently. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you can have multiple things running on the same CPU at the same time because each core can handle a different task at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, the way that these uh, computers manage this is a, through a process called speculative execution where you you predict what actions are going to take place in the future. So you can kind of pre-send commands to the CPU to try and like... Yeah, it's, it's very yeah. technical. It's above my pay grade. Damn. <laughs> it's above all of our pay grades combined. <laughs> um what this wait you guys are getting paid for this <laughs> i no. have a job outside of this ah oh, okay what this means is there's an exploit in the system where you can select a memory value in ram and then wait for the speculative execution to pull the next bit in ram and it'll slightly affect other values in the ram and then you can kind of pull out information that you have no authority over hmm. So you can read data that isn't yours. It doesn't hurt that much on a personal computer, but where this really hurts is like servers. Yeah. Like oh. that are dealing with like, like a Facebook server that has everybody's private information in it. Yeah. You could run one of these exploit programs on there and it could pull private information off one bit at a time mm -hmm. just by exploiting this speculative speculative execution thing. Yeah. And I feel like hasn't there been um, some, um, like I feel like Mark Zuckerberg and that sort of thing and, and the whole Facebook team have kind of come under scrutiny over the last little while about, okay, how protected is all the information? against oh, things like this it's, it's not apart from the fact that but, they release it to anyone who wants it yeah but um i know that yeah there've been um there's been a whole bunch of different sort of um court cases and things like that recently about the privacy of the information that people are putting on there hmm. i mean you put whatever you put on there you can, it's on the internet you kind mm -hmm. of just have to you have to assume that anybody can see it okay got to delete some things <laughs> <laughs> once it's on the internet it's never gone ken it's oh, always no. there all those cat girls deviant art posts he made. All my fan art. Forever. <laughs> um, that reminds me of that time. You know when Bitcoin became very popular? And then people mining Bitcoin was able to put like their mining algorithm into other people's computers. So that they mine, mine Bitcoin for them. A lot of the torrent sites still do that. They have a little disclaimer at the bottom that says, we're using some of your CPU power to mine Bitcoin so we don't have to run ads. Rut roll. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's fine. You gotta make money somehow. Dominating rating. So I guess the first movie that we had on our list to kind of give a review to was The Matrix, which is just like the no you know, the fever dream of the of Electron <laughs> and Phoenix. Um And the beginning of my love of uh Keanu Reeves. No, it's the beginning of everyone No No not everyone's love of Keanu Reeves. Everyone started loving him with Bill and Ted. Yeah, look. Was he in anything before that? Yeah, I feel like he was in a few things. Um, I haven't seen Bill and Ted. That's real good. You should watch What's it. What's that one that they just remade recently with the surfers and they rob a bank and stuff? Point Break? Yeah, wasn't he? He was in the original that. He was in that, but I think that was after Bill Maybe. and Ted. Actually, yeah, Bill and Ted was probably first. Anyway, anyway, we should do a recap of what The Matrix story is. So The Matrix story is a post-apocalyptic future. Spoilers. If you haven't seen The Matrix, it's 20 years old. Fight me. <laughs> I feel like we're, we're past oh, the spoiler. No, I have, I've only seen half of it. Oh, Fuck off again. Uh, <laughs> it's a post-apocalyptic future where robots have enslaved machines. Um to use them as a power source but to keep the humans docile they keep them inside a simulated reality called the matrix and then people who live in the the real world can hack into the matrix and kind of you know fight the machines and fight the power i guess you know it, it's yeah. 1980s fight hacker power. fever dream <laughs> yeah <laughs> But I think um, when when you actually think about it, so basically, if we're looking at 
how these machines, how the internet kind of thing here took over and what the whole plan was. I actually don't think it's that, I mean, it's far-fetched, but it's not that far-fetched. I mean, it all started with, you know, humans becoming so reliant on machines, which I don't think were that far off. And then eventually coming up with AI that was so, I guess, intelligent and had like its own, I guess, thought process that they kind of, a couple of them started branching off then creating their own and then it ended in a a war against the machines and i think what was it that the um the humans sent nanobots up to the sun because that was what was powering the, yeah. the machines so they destroyed the sun. <laughs> they were just they destroyed the sun and then the robots then used the humans to farm them to power the sun or something like that <laughs> like- so they they put nanobots in the sky so that the robots couldn't be solar powered anymore. And in the movie, the robots then start farming humans for electricity, which is a stupid concept on its face because like anyone with like a basic understanding of like, you know, thermodynamics will understand you can't get more energy out of a human than you put into it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I guess but would from a if they're still if they're then in the matrix and using their brain is that yeah. not power, like, helping with that power, the, though? The, no. The original plan the Wachowskis had, which Warner Brothers shot down, was that uh, something to the effect of, like, you know, the the saying that humans only use 10% of their brain? Oh, uh, yeah. It was going to be, like, the robots are using the other 90% of humans' brains as, like, a supercomputer to control a fusion, a fusion reactor. Ah, uh, okay. And that was where they got their power. And okay. the Warner Brothers were like, no, nah, people won't get that. That would make much more sense, though. It makes so much more sense, but like... <laughs> I can only I can only handle so much. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah. Um, yeah. No. I think if we're using that one, what's our rating? Are we going thumbs up, thumbs down? Ooh. I give it a thumbs up from both angles. The, the robots take over the world and then Neo is able to take back control of the world. Just by being a lead hacker. Yeah, I... So I, I give it a thumbs up. I give it. I also give it a thumbs up. I think it's also great, great movies. And just Keanu. And I think it's yeah, just Keanu as well. Yes, please. But I also think that from a standpoint of, as I said, it's so far-fetched. <laughs> but the fact of, you know, how it begins and how um, humans are so reliant on machine. I mean, this was back in... When was it? The first one was in 99, I think. Something like, like that. It, how how much further we've come to rely on machines in that time like it's this movie didn't scare us away at all <laughs> no i think they're looking forward to the the war of the machines just to further shit on melbourne so like <laughs> melbourne was this like bastion of the hacker computer in the late 80s and then they ended up filming the matrix in sydney get fucked melbourne. <laughs> oh mean you have your hipsters and your coffee <laughs> <laughs> and your theater your theater get fucked but yeah no um yeah i give it a thumbs up as well i'd say because you know at this point i think a lot of us is looking forward to this virtual uh, virtual world which where where we can all have our perfect lives wait do you mean expecting or looking forward to <laughs> looking forward to <laughs> looking forward really? to really you didn't uh, hear it here guys well, i'll start <laughs> learning to hack now okay yep cool <laughs> I'm waiting for the day I can learn Kung Fu in one day. Well, in like two minutes. That'd be fantastic. Download and... Oh, no, wrong Kung Fu. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a wrong Kung Fu? You download, yeah. You accidentally downloaded Kung Fu Hustle and now you can only re- um, repeat the script word for word <laughs> instead of actually doing Kung Fu. <laughs> <laughs> we purposefully trained him wrong as a joke. <laughs> that sounds fucking terrible. <laughs> um... Oh. So next one is, you know, non-fiction, the social network. Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg, for this, you know, hellscape we live in. <laughs> I'm addicted to your social platform. Uh-huh. I avoid it like the plague. Um, I, I think in that regard, considering how it is very our current situation, I mean, I think it's pretty good. Oh, I don't yeah, know. big thumbs up <laughs> on that one. <laughs> Get it? The likes symbol. Hey! Hey! No, I... I I haven't seen the movie in a while but i do remember enjoying it and i think it was it's interesting to see something that we are all so reliant on how it all came to be hmm. um and that he was a bit of a dick really yeah. he was a dick he still is a dick i mean mm-hmm. yeah but now he's now he's, he's he's not giving any of his money to his child it's all going to charity he's still a weirdo that doesn't know how to drink water 
<laughs> oh. oh, classic Zucks. I love all of those memes about how he's a lizard person. I find them so entertaining. <laughs> You've seen him like in an interview, eh? Like, he's just, yeah. I don't, I don't doubt that for a second that he's some form of lizard person. Did he progressively get worse? Like, yeah. I remember like seeing like videos and pictures of him before, and he didn't seem so inhuman. Yeah, I think A, power has gone to his head a little bit. B, it's lonely at the top. And C, y- you know, he's he's worth a billion trillion dollars. <laughs> he can be as crazy as he wants. That's, that's probably true. He can be a lizard person if he wants to. He yeah. probably can pay to become an actual lizard person. Mm. Yeah. Oh, money. <laughs> to have that much money. I'm not saying I would <sighs> use it to turn into a lizard person, but, you know, just to have the... It's an option. Just to have the option there would be nice. So next movie is The Net. And full disclosure, I think from here on out, I don't think I've actually seen any of these. The Net was the Net was a good movie. I do love my gal Sandra Bullock. Woo! Yeah. So basically she's she's a hacker, she's a bit of a recluse, and there's this friend of hers that gives her a floppy disk. It's the nineties. Um and <laughs> one point four <laughs> megabytes of malware. <laughs> Um, and so basically, long story short, she um, it's it's got these codes of how to hack into different um, software and to break down firewalls and things like that through a floppy disk and a password. Um, there's this guy that takes her on a holiday, tries to kill her. Um, she hits her head um, and wakes up three in hospital three days later or something like that. Um, and what he's used with the um, program somehow is that he's actually completely wiped her. So there's no record of her existing her social security number has been given to somebody else her um a, her house has been sold everything um and the thing was that made me realize i probably need to get out a bit more is that none of her neighbors can actually um when she <laughs> like shows up none of them can actually say identify her and say yeah that is her because she was <laughs> such a recluse because she was just a hacker um so basically it's just a story of how she tries to prove who she is um and try and stop them from what they're they're doing really is the the loose interpretation of it but essentially it's just kind of guys that are hacking which i think from a real world perspective we've i think it's kind of happened before so it's the perfect identity for yeah but i think it kind of brings up the whole being able to erase people's identities yeah and wasn't it also that they were using the program to kind of hack into like big company systems and then like selling them the protection against the thing that they just done (laughs) yeah basically (laughs) yeah but it it kind of it kind of reminded me um dark knight rises when um when she catwoman is looking for the the usb to kind of fix everything and kind of wipe her identity and things like that so i feel like in some way i feel like that's going to be the anachronism of the 2010s (laughs) please (laughs) the usb (laughs) erase me please um but it's so i think in some ways that movie has held up in some regards. And I think that while, yeah, look, it's, it's a nineties film, take, <laughs> take it as you will. But um, I think the thing I'm most impressed about with that movie is that they were able to sell a house in three days. I think it was for sale. <laughs> I don't think they quite sold it, but yeah, it was, um, it really made me take a second look at myself and think that you probably need to meet your neighbors. Like, hey, get out of my house. Hey, this is my house. I bought it yesterday. <laughs> It went on. It was listed the day before that. <laughs> How long have I been gone? Uh, I'm just gonna. This is my house. I've owned it for a day. <laughs> I'm gonna go introduce myself. Introduce myself to the neighbours. I think. <laughs> just like. Just, just in look case. Look at my face. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like a picture of me for your fridge? <laughs> I'll commit the face to memory. <laughs> Hello, my pa- friend Jim's a weirdo, and he may delete me from society. Yeah. Oh, God. he definitely would if you could. Don't delete me, Jim. I mean, I feel like that's a good plan. The real part of their plan, you know, the, you know, hacking into businesses and then selling, like, it's a protection racket. Like, that's yeah. a fairly good plan for taking over the world. The, like, deleting people one by one. Not a good, good Yeah, no. Not a great plan. <laughs> I, think it, I think it was more a safeguard for them of if she did come back and try and stop them. She was the only one that really knew what was going on. <laughs> so I don't oh. know whether it was actually part of their plan to delete people one by one. Um, also, you know what takes a lot of effort? Erasing someone from society. You know what doesn't take a whole lot of effort? Shooting someone when they're in a coma. They don't put up much chase. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think there was probably much security cameras around in the 90s, was there? No. Yeah, interesting. Hmm. 
Um, Foiled. <laughs> <laughs> um, but overall, I, I think the whole the plan that they had, I, I think yeah. it was the pl- yeah. the, their real plan. Thumbs up. That's a good plan. Good mm-hmm. plan. Easily foiled. I think. Oh yeah. All you need very is one person. But, but yeah. Also, if you're trying to take over the world and say you de- like you delete a person who's you know, somewhat important and have some influence in the world. They're also the kind of people who would have heaps of people who would recognize them and can vouch for them as well. So it's Oh, that's like... why you get the, the low lives. But deleting the low lives Nobody's gonna miss isn't them. helpful. The plan is very dependent on the fact that she knew no one. <laughs> yeah. She it's was like a social recluse. any kind of like CSI or like law and order or whatever. It's always the, the hookers <laughs> or the, uh, the, uh, the homeless that, that go first. <laughs> Um, so yeah, thumbs up on that one. Mm-hmm. Thumbs up on um, the uh, effectiveness of the floppy disk. I'm pretty sure it got sprayed into the ocean and it was spoiled <laughs> just from that. I couldn't get my computer to read a floppy disk after it had been in my backpack. <laughs> like, How great were floppy disks, though? They were the, they were the fucking worst. <laughs> I, I only like playing with that metal bit that just flips You just off. like to flick it? Yeah, yeah the flick it. Yeah, you yeah, just yeah. flick it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so the next one is her. Again, disclosure: haven't seen this one. Has anyone seen this one? I have not. I've, I've seen the trailer, and look, I've I've read about the movie, and I've I've had read some reviews and things like that, and <laughs> I think this is honestly where our future is going. <laughs> Just having an AI sex bot in your phone? Oh, for sure, we're already there. No, it's, yeah. So it's it's basically for those that don't know. Um, a guy that develops a relationship with an AI virtual assistant called Samantha. So I believe played by Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, but apparently it's it's to do with that. I think the guy is going through a divorce. Um, so I think that's kind of what's turned him towards an AI virtual assistant, and they kind of start talking. He falls in love with her, basically. Um, Shit, they start talking about relationships and things. She tries to get him on, send him on a on a date with. A, he's got a friend that's been trying to set him up with somebody else. And then when he's on on a date with her, finds out that she's just gone through a breakup too, but is also now dating her AI. <laughs> like, so that's what they connect on apparently. Um, and then he realizes, Hey how... man, it's twenty twenty. Love is love. <laughs> Look, love is love, but this is a this is a weird one. What I really enjoyed when I was reading, and look, again, I, disclaimer, I have not seen the movie, but I kind of want to now just to see how this scene goes down. But apparently they bring in a sex surrogate. So, so I'm just imagining, you know, the voice of Scarlett Johansson with a totally different body of somebody else and him just being awkward as shit. <laughs> Um, but apparently in the end, the AI guys, they find some sort of distant thing outside of the real world and all the AI disappear. So all the humans are left on their own. Like, <laughs> come on. Here's my question with this movie. Why do you need more than one AI? Well, I think from what I've read, apparently he finds out at, towards the end of it that she's actually speaking to thousands of other people and is in love with hundreds of them. So he gets real, like, oh. hurt by it. Like, it's a fucking robot, mate. Like, really? It's glorified, uh. like, smarter child. <laughs> oh my god, smarter child. Did not expect that. It's, <laughs> it's basically <laughs> like the, um, you know those guys that use um, VR headsets for, for porn? Like, <laughs> come on. But yes, anyway, I don't see this being completely out of the realm whether I okay I'm going to give this one a thumbs down just because I desperately don't want it to happen I feel like I'm going to give it an eh because I feel like it's very plausible but it's also not a great way to take over the world it's a great way to convince like well it depends if it's if it's used as a distraction while you're off doing something else possibly but I just feel like that's where we're going already with all those weirdos and their VR porn and things like that like I don't think we're that far off it and it's really disturbing People will marry a tree. Like, imagine if they start saying nice things to you. Like, if the robots start saying nice things to you, what? <laughs> well, I mean, you're just going to have somebody who identifies as AI at some point, or, oh, hey, I'm I'm actually a, a possum, and then somebody's going to marry that. Like, it's just, who knows what's going on. Mm. Emma gives it a thumbs down because she desperately doesn't want to see this. I give it a thumbs up because I'm desperate. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but actually, yeah, probably thumbs down. I don't think you'll actually be able to take over the world. And I'm going to give it an eh. Yeah. Yep. So I think on aggregate, that's a nay. Mm. 
Okay. Cool. Next one is War Games. And so the plot of this movie is Matthew Broderick is a teenager who hacks into uh, a supercomputer at a secret underground base. So basically hacker Ferris Bueller. That's what he does yeah, in hack, his day. hacker Ferris Bueller. <laughs> he uses his 1980s, um, you know, microcomputer to hack into the you know a pentagon missile command system and this computer is a supercomputer that's tasked with like running all sorts of simulations about nuclear warfare to see like which plans will work so like mm. if the russians do this then like if i counterattack with this will that win that sort of thing and yep. it just runs simulations over and over and over again to um see what will, what will succeed what will yep yeah and for some reason the compute like the the programmer for the computer included a bunch of like mini games in it like a chess and a tic-tac-toe mini game you know frogger Ooh. was there you just know frogger was there <laughs> so it had this list of mini games like you know tic-tac-toe chess whatever and then at the bottom of the list was thermonuclear war and by clicking that option it initiated thermonuclear war preparations <laughs> zero to 100 really quickly. somebody really fucked up that day <laughs> Yeah, and so, like, Ferris Bueller has to go and, like, save the world by playing tic-tac-toe with a computer and convincing it that um, nuclear war is a non it's not a winnable scenario. So they have to teach it about mutually assured destruction. That if, like, we attack, then they attack and everyone dies and it's not a good idea. Do you know what? It actually reminds me of an episode of um, Arrested Development when Buster's, like, helping out the army and he thinks that it's just, he's just playing a game, but he actually realises that it's he's been doing a simulation and flying. <laughs> And flying like missiles into different countries and killing oh. people. <laughs> like right. I can, I can see it's plausible that like in this day and age, with how realistic games are, that if somebody <laughs> look, he's hoping that the Pentagon doesn't fuck up and something like that happens. But if somebody was to, that people would just genuinely think it's a, a some sort of simulation or game. That's how realistic things are becoming. Mm-hmm. What's that show called again? Arrested, Arrested Development. Development. Oh, sorry, yeah. Arrested Development. No, the um, episode of Psychopaths that I'm thinking about has the uh, exact same plot of that. So the um, hacker put a gra- graphical interface over... They made a game and they connected the game's controls to uh, these drones that were basically these army robots that were tanks. Mm. And uh, they were using people to control these robots to go around and shoot people, but they covered it up so it was like a cute little game that they were playing. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And little did they know. (laughs) Little did they know they were killing people. And at some point, uh, they uh, took all that uh, graphical overlay. They took it off, and that uh, caused a giant panic uh, in the whole in the whole society. And everyone that was playing the game had like a drop in like mental health. That was, oh. yes. So that's, that was my, uh, that was the psychopath episode I was thinking about. Okay. Hmm. It's a, yeah. It's an, I was just saying like, it's, it's, I think there's probably um, a lot of different mediums that use that sort of mm-hmm. same idea because I think in this day and age, it's yeah. As things become more realistic, mm-hmm. it's, it's more common. Yeah. But with war games, I don't know how realistic it is today. Like back in the eighties, it was probably more, slightly more realistic. Yeah. Cause everything was just that green. <laughs> Yeah, a teenager in his bedroom could just yeah. hack into a, you know, yeah. missile control subsystem. I mean, up until the 80s, the, the launch codes for the missiles were 000000000. Oh, wow. That freaks me out. It's okay now, Ken. They've changed it. Have they? Or we don't know. Or that's the scary thing. Or maybe they just want you to think they changed yeah. it. Jim, I'm sure if you know that that's what it was, they've changed it. <laughs> it's like shit wait nobody will suspect we did that again <laughs> it's perfect it's perfect no they will get up the uh that notification you cannot use the same password twice <laughs> yeah. although are you ready for this mm-hmm. up know. until the up until the mid 60s there were no launch codes it was just a button oh god sounds easier and so congress lobbied to get you know a launch code on these nuclear weapons so that like just a rando couldn't push a button and launch them all, and they went, ah, oh, fuck it, fine, we'll make it zero, 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 zero. It's just some rando could push it. Where were they hiding this button? Um, Just, like, in the launch complex. <laughs> Surely that's hard to get to, though. The launch complex. Yeah, but, like, 
anybody who was in that room could push the button. Well, they should have just put it in a different room and then they wouldn't need it. Yeah, but it's the same problem. It's not secure. (laughs) Stop poking (laughs) holes in it. They could have just had like a button. I love those movies when it's literally that little glass flip case. Flip (laughs) it up, press the red button, done. None of this 10 minute countdown of before I destroy the world. I want it done now. Um, See, I don't think it's particularly plausible now that somebody could hack into a missile control system and launch the nuclear weapons. But, you know, in the 80s, slightly more realistic. So, you know, on aggregate, I'll, on aggregate, I'll give it a thumbs up. Yeah, look, Ooh. I think as, as an idea and, and, and taking it as, it as it was, sure. Yeah, but I agree. Something probably, yeah, wouldn't have been as easy now. No. Yep. Mm. All right. Um, next one is Ghost in the Shell. So have you seen this movie, Emma? No, I have not. I know you've seen this movie, Ken. I have not, actually. <laughs> you've not seen this I movie? I have not seen this movie. Oh, Ken, you <laughs> need to see this movie. Oh, have it's, you? It's right up your alley. Really? Yes, I have seen this movie. Oh. Yes. So it's set in near future Tokyo. Well, sorry, near future Japan. Uh, and the plot of the movie is that technology has has advanced to a point where you can implant people's consciousness inside robots. Woo! So you don't really have to you don't really have to worry about losing your physical body anymore because your body can just move between different robot bodies. Oh man, living yeah. the dream. Yeah. Um, Especially if you can have that body of Scarlett Johansson robot. Yeah. <laughs> so Scarlett Johansson is a robot called the Major. To be fair, I haven't seen the Scarlett Johansson one. I've only seen the um the anime one. Oh yep. Of course you have. Her character. <laughs> I watched it before the Scarlett Johansson one came out, so like I think it's fine. I'm proud of you, Jim. What a loser. What a loser. <laughs> anyway, the plot of the movie is Scarlett Johansson's character is tracking down this character known as the Puppet Master, who is using the internet to kind of flit around through all of these different robot bodies and like be a terrorist, basically. Yep, I'm on board. Yeah, so he's just jumping around, you know, causing havoc, being a real top guy, mm-hmm. questioning the nature of existence. So, you know, it's a fairly good premise if you go with the, the assumption that we have the technology to implant consciousness inside a robot. Give us a, give us some time, Jim, all right? Oh, God, you can't rush these things. I'm it's hopeful. only 2019. <laughs> <clears throat> I, I think, look, I think it's probably, it's it's an interesting idea. I could, I'd give that a thumbs up, actually. I think plausible in the future, possibly. Yeah. There's this great book that I read a couple of years ago about artificial intelligence Mm -hmm. uh it was called super intelligence paths dangers strategies by a guy called nick bostrom um and he talks about it's this great book but the first like eight or so seven or eight chapters is about how ai is inevitable and he goes through all of the different ways that it's going to happen and one of the arguments he says is that like at the moment we're trying to emulate rat brains and then you know very soon we might be able to emulate a cat brain and then a dog and then like you know eventually at some point we're going to get to a being able to emulate a human brain i thought it was going to keep rhyming and then (laughs) very disappointed you know some point shortly after that, we'll be able to emulate a human brain at 1.1 time speed, and then 1.2, and then 2 times, and then 10 times, and then 100 times, and then 500 times speed. And then eventually you get to like something that can do a lifetime's work of human work in seconds. Wow. Not if it's depressed. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, you're not wrong. All right. No, you're definitely not wrong. <laughs> That's, I mean, yeah, it's it's actually scary to think about what can happen. Because, I mean, if you think about where things were at in, from just from the 60s or even the 80s and where we're at now, like what we have now compared to another 20 years down the track, like it's actually quite scary to think about. Yeah. Like we're almost at the point where we have like Jarvis talking to us in like our phones. Ooh, yes. I mean, I got, we're got we're Siri. almost there. Yeah, Siri basically. Oh, she's going to hear me. <laughs> oh, no. What do you know? What? <laughs> At least you acknowledged her. So yeah, are we giving Ghost in the Shell a thumbs up? Yes, yeah. a thumbs up for Ghost in the Shell. Cool. Not the anime version. Yep, sure. Okay, should we get on to our actual plans? We should. We should. Okay. Um, who's going first? Host one, host alpha, or host Emma? <laughs> <laughs> Let's mix things up again. Let's let uh, host Emma go first, shall we? Okay. I feel sure. like mine's going to be probably the most dark and depressing one. So let's <laughs> uh, try and lighten it up towards the end. Um, okay. But I guess kind of just because we've uh, just been on our themes of movies, um, knowing that our theme for this week was, was internet, it kind of made me think about 
um, and I'm just going to put a disclaimer out there that I'm not a crazy person. I did a psychology degree, so this stuff really intrigues me. <laughs> Remember that we have the disclaimer at the beginning, Emma. <laughs> no, but I just feel this, like for people anything listening... Anything you say can, can or can and will be used against you <laughs> but, No, but I just feel um, like it's it's probably a nice thing for people to know that I'm not totally crazy. Um, I have a psych degree and I just enjoy this kind of thing. But, um, that's what makes you most dangerous. As long as you don't threaten any whales, um, you're good. Yes. Oh, look, the night is still young. Um, but anyway, so what, what the kind of um, internet thing made me made me think about was this movie I've um, seen a couple of times called Untraceable. Um, so essentially, it's a movie set in Portland, um, and it's about a serial killer who rigs contraptions that kill victims based on the number of hits received on a website. That is okay. killwithme.com. Um, so basically, it features a live streaming video of the victim. Um, and so obviously, the more people that log on, the faster the person dies. Um, and during the movie, the, the FBI does a press conference because people are starting to log into it of them being like, hey, hey, guys, maybe maybe don't do that. And which obviously makes them do it more. Um, so that kind of made me think um, a little bit, I guess, kind of about the bystander effect, sort of, um, which for those that don't know, it's essentially the more people that are around, the less likely people somebody is to actually help somebody so if you see in a crowded so just let's just say we're in Times square mm-hmm. somebody's passed passed out or something like that there's obviously a crap ton of people oh. there it's and less likely just... that that person yeah less yeah. likely that person's actually going to receive help because mm-hmm. there's so many people around and everybody keeps passing the yeah they expect someone the else to do it yeah, yeah. exactly right. so i then you know started doing a bit of research as well and um into some i guess real world um examples of, of how this has kind of happened and I think in, in 2008 there was a guy that actually committed suicide while his webcam was live. There was about 1,500 people that were watching at the time. Not one person called the police until it was too late and even back in 1964 there's that really famous case of um, Kitty Genovese. Um, there was 39 neighbours of hers that watched her being attacked and none of them called. Right. So it kind of got, I guess, me, and until again, it was it was too late because you know even though there was thirty nine people, you know everybody else is seeing it. You're kind of like, oh, that person's gonna call, sort of thing. So it got me thinking as well. Like, there's also a favorite book, one of my favorite books by my favorite author, Chris Carter, um, wrote a book, um, in his... like of X Files fame. No, <laughs> no, okay, no. different Chris different Carter. Chris okay. Carter. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he, so he kind of had the same sort of thought I guess so there's a series of books he does that follow a detective Robert Hunter who's a psychologist and everything like that anyway he gets this call from a mysterious person he's directed to a website um, and he has to make a difficult choice while watching somebody die Um, and then with the next victim the guy puts it as a live um, a live real live murder reality show kind of thing Uh. and there's people watching and they make the deciding vote of whether the person dies or not like, yeah. and it's just, you know, it's kind of, I guess, so where I'm going with this, all the dark and dreariness is kind of where my head has gone at is, I guess, my idea of, if we're going back to what our um, definitions of world domination or whatever, or taking the, over the world is around that whole, I guess, fear thing and mm-hmm. kind of, you know, use, using that. So without being an absolute psychopath serial killer, <laughs> I would kind of, I guess, use the same sort of bystander effect kind of to, to a certain degree of, you know, creating something like that, starting off small. But, you know, the more people that, that get wind of it, the more things will actually happen. And it's, you know, it's like a car mm-hmm. accident. You, you don't want to look, but you can't look away. So it would just be time after time kind of making it bigger and more elaborate and obviously as, as word gets out people you know start looking at it a bit more so I guess in that way it would be and again I, I'd probably need somebody else to help me with this because I don't know how to how to do this yeah I guess the floor in your <laughs> couple of floors in your plan is, I guess a it seems like you're the one doing all the <laughs> yeah, killing look. I'm not saying I'm going to kill people. I'm just saying that, like, oh, I mean, obviously, probably people would die in the path. But I'm saying that, like, you know, let's plant a bomb somewhere. And the more people that log into a certain website or do whatever, the, f- the quicker it is it's going to explode or something like that, or the bigger the blast will be or something. So that's kind of, I guess, where I was going with that. So it would be 
city okay. after city or whatever it may be. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, slowly taking over things that way. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, maybe the White House. Look, who knows? <laughs> and what happens when somebody takes down your murdertube.net website? Uh, I will have another mirror. It'll be, it'll be <laughs> like bouncing off different things. So once one's shut down, it'll, it'll respawn somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. That's not a, it's not yeah. a terrible plan. I feel like it's, it might be rather slow moving. Slow, slow moving, but uh, all about the, all about the slow build. But it was more about like, I think, I guess in this one, my thought is that I'd be using it more of as like a, an experiment, like a social experiment mm-hmm. to actually see how that would work. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause I mean, if people are smart enough, I'm also, I'm like, poking holes in my own plan all it takes is everybody to be like hey bad shit happens when you log in maybe don't <laughs> like, oh although you know there's gonna be you, you just know that there's gonna be some people that are like i'm gonna watch somebody fucking yep. die today yeah 100 percent. and that's you know, that that's yeah, somebody and that's thing. and that's why honestly why i really like this book is because people are literally on this um what is it called uh, like the live murder reality show people mm-hmm. are literally they have a button there for live or die and they all vote die because they want to watch this person. And it's that like keyboard warrior kind of behind the screen. They're never mm-hmm. going to know it was me, but they're all voting to kill the person. And I just think from a psychology perspective that I guess kind of having some sort of experiment like that would be really interesting and just mm-hmm. fucking shit up in the meantime. Not mm-hmm. the, not the slow, not what's the, the slow murder. Here, I'm not looking for that. <laughs> yeah. What's your end goal here? <laughs> yeah. What's your end goal? You're just talking about killing this person. No, 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 no. Like I said, it's not, for me, it's not about killing. (laughs) No, like I said, for me. Sometimes it's the journey, not the destination. (laughs) No, but like I said, it's not, for me, those examples have sparked this thought in me of Mm -hmm. how could you use it for, so I'm not talking, I'm going to slowly kill people. For me, it would be, how do I use that in a way to take over cities? Mm -hmm. So it would be, you know, blowing up certain things so that you know maybe i have an under maybe i have an under the sea layer again and this <laughs> that is the only so- is that just going to be a running thing yeah, of your probably <laughs> your plans it's like and then i retreat to- underground layer but <laughs> i think no but i'm more meaning that you know using that as a and just to try and take over the world in the way that i'm the i've got the only safe haven that nobody knows okay. where is safe kind of thing. But I, again, I think there's there's definitely lots of holes in my plan, but I like it. Not an awful plan. Ken, you're up. Oh, you're on deck. okay. Hit Let's me. see. Oh, what was my plan? Okay. So, <clears throat> with the abundancy of uh, influencer, influ- influencers and uh, YouTube idols and things like that, uh, my plan is to also influence people through the power of the internet. So you're basically Ooh. Kylie Jenner. I was planning to fabricate a lovely story um, about myself and then subliminally... Ins- because there's no real good stories about that, yourself? Y- you know, I'm not... <laughs> like, oh, don't you know, before this podcast, I was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Jeez. <laughs> nah. Uh, yeah, nah, well, uh, you know, I want to be more like... You know, like the leadership leader type, the, um, you know, the guy who uh, knows what he's doing. Clearly, I don't really, but you know, Uh, and subliminally enter those images into people's like favorite movies and like uh, ads and, uh, you know, build up my image, you know, as a leader. And one day I will reveal myself as the person who will lead this uh lead this world to uh salvation salvation yes lead this world to <laughs> salvation from what from uh the um uh... yes tell me ken the drink that you have in front of you right now is that kool-aid <laughs> it is not kool-aid <laughs> it is a bottle of water but uh yes that was a re- let's see was that my plan Yes, that was my plan. Um, you know, I, I, I yeah. think it sounds like a, a good plan. I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, all I can picture in my head right now is that Simpsons episode. <laughs> but I, I think that's a, that's a not a bad idea. That's not a bad plan. Yeah, so you're basically, you're starting an internet cult. Yes, basically. My question is, when do you switch from subliminal to liminal? When people start talking about me. You know, okay. when they're, they're, you know, they're like, oh, I've been having like images of this guy in my dreams. You know, this guy like... Oh, I think I've seen him before. 
This is a nice peek into your psyche here, Ken. So you're going to project, you know, your image. You know, you're going to project, you know, a strong, powerful, tall, <laughs> handsome man into people's yes, dreams. Yes, very much so. Basically, every yeah. single time um, Captain America does something cool, I, like, snip my face in for, like, a split <laughs> second. And then I, like, you know, let, let it be Chris Evans again. And then they were like, ah... That guy's Disc- pretty good disclaimer, looking. Disclaimer, Ken doesn't look like Chris Evans. <laughs> I do not look like Chris Evans at all. <laughs> that's, that's America's what, that, ass. That's... <laughs> to be fair, very pe- very few people do look like Chris Evans. <laughs> that man is a national treasure. International treasure. That's why I need to associate people's minds with my face, with his. But uh, with that, uh, we, on that note, I think uh, we should talk about your plan, Jim. Yeah. So my plan is... Uh, what's called a distributed denial of service attack. DDoS. Yeah. So the way that these work is when you send a message to another computer, that computer has to process it. Um, if you send a lot of messages to a computer, it can't handle it. And it basically can't connect to the internet because it's just having to deal with all of these messages that are coming in. So you can do it. You can deny their service by just spamming them with information. So... What some people worked out a little while ago is that what you can do is you can spoof your IP address so that the place that you're sending the message to, Mm. rather than sending it straight back to you, sends it to somewhere else. These people worked out that uh, what you could do is you could send a very small command of give me the time to a time server, but say, give it to this address. And if you do thousands of those requests, then thousands of those time responses, which are you know quite large files sometimes, go to this other random network connection that you want to deny service to. Right. And then the final cherry on this cake is that some people worked out a lot of Internet of Things devices, so like connected fridges, connected washing machines, smart lights, stuff like that, oh were all completely unsecured and had no you know, protection on what they could do. You know shit's about to go down. <laughs> So what they did was they wrote this uh, malware that targeted all of these Internet of Things devices and just made huge denial of service attacks, which is millions of devices all spamming like whoever they wanted to target. But my plan is to use a very large file, one file in particular, which is the 10 hour long version of that He-Man Hey Yeah 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 song. (laughs) Oh no. So that is my plan. And then hold the world to ransom while every single computer in the world is just spammed with He-Man going. So, so you're meaning like fridges? Are just no, no, no. Be like fridges that? are going to be like spamming, you know, this, you know, a link to this video to like every other connected device on the planet and just oh gumming up the works of the internet. Right. But what or about like... you know those 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 new age um, fridges that can actually play YouTube videos and play all that kind of stuff? If they have oh, for that, sure. if, then they would be playing if, the video. If I too. can, any single device yeah. that I can will be playing this. Oh man! Oh gosh! I'd kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh man! I'd set. Up, I'd use my plan and set up my device that whichever machine, kills me. Whichever no, whichever machine was using the amount of times oh that that video God. was being watched. Surprising no one. Yeah. The vote to kill Jim had a one hundred percent approval rate. <laughs> oh. oh my God! Wow. All right. Cool. <laughs> Look. Um. As far as annoying plans go. Yours is definitely the winner. <laughs> <laughs> but who oh who is God. the winner is the question. I, th- I think Ken. I, th- I also yeah. think Ken. Ah, oh, thank you, guys. I think it's it's the most plausible as well. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, no, not that it's actually going to happen, but I just... I meant if you think of the theme of, like, planting messages... <laughs> places yeah, yeah. and you know the amount like everybody is addicted to social media and to you know any kind of visual format that um if there was a if there was a way for ken to kind of plant that in there then yeah for sure that could uh, that could it, happen I, I think mentioning chris evans won my vote uh for from emma <laughs> Look, it, it definitely sweetened the deal. Yeah. <laughs> if anybody listening wants to make some fan art of Ken as Chris Evans subliminally implanting himself into the like, collective unconscious, be my guest. <laughs> I don't think I want to see that. I, I want to see that. I don't want to see that. The internet is not ready for that. I would like to thank my uh, listeners in advance. The internet is not ready. But um, no, I my vote does go to, to Ken this week. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Congratulations, Ken. Yay! <sighs> 
All right, now I really got to up my game to try and win the next one. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Well, that was fun, guys. Thanks for recording yep. tonight. Thank no you problem. for having us. Um, thank you, host number Come one. On. Thank you, host Emma. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, host Alpha. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, God. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, next time we'll be talking about biological weapons. So it's going to get a little bit creepy crawly, I suspect. So everybody should, you know, buckle up for that one. <laughs> and Jim's out for the win on that one. So that should be interesting. Oh, you guys already know my plan too. <laughs> oh. but thanks, thanks for another, another fun recording session, guys. Consider yourself dominated. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thanks for listening to World Domination. You can find our show notes or leave us a voice message at anchor.fm forward slash world domination.